Hello and welcome. My name's Super Saiyan and I thought I'd do a big news announcement. There's been quite a few announcements recently over this whole week, so I thought I would uh, do a special video um, and talk about them all. First thing that I want to talk about is Warhammer Heroes. You can see it here. This is off of uh, Warhammer community um, website, just type in Warhammer community, it'll, it'll just load up. Basically the, the hobby is made and shaped by the people who love it and Games Workshop have recognised uh, that the hobby is driven by everyone within the community, that's that's everyone. People hosting the events, people running clubs, people on YouTube teaching people how to, to model and to paint, that are maintaining blogs, Instagrams, Twitters, YouTube uh, comments and and responding to people in the community um, and doing sort of news videos and, and all the rest of it. They've recognised that. And for a lot of people, part of the hobby, um, they do it because they enjoy the hobby and they do it because they, they want to give something back to the community. They don't do it because... Uh, they they are expecting anything in, in return. They just are passionate about the hobby and they want to, um, you know, share that passion and um, give something back to the community in any way that they can, whether it's battle reports or painting tutorials or uh, unboxings, reviews, wh whatever it is. And um, that's what they do. So Games Workshop have, have jumped on this and um, basically they need your help. Um, to find your Warhammer hero. You can click on this nominations form here. Uh, the nominations close on the 31st of uh, December and then they'll be announcing the winners before the end of January. They'll be awarding this year's accolades on the basis of the quality of the nomination as opposed to just quantity of votes. Uh, so it doesn't matter if your um, hero is publicly prominent um, on social media or whatever. Uh, it's it's about the quality. They, they want to hear about everyone. So it can be your your local guy that um, runs runs the uh, the gaming club or, or whatever, and it says glory awaits the worthy. But these people already give a lot of their time and their effort and their money in some cases um, for the community anyway. So a glory kind of um, thing is is not even on their radar. Put it that way. And then it shows you this medal thing. Um, it says that they'll receive a special medal as well as a t-shirt. It goes on to say, uh, Roll of Honor, an invitation to um, a ceremony uh, and, and all the rest of it. So, and then, then there's an FAQ and yeah, it gives you this odd sort of, you know, kind of cartoony sort of artwork rather than kind of grim dark. But there you go. Um, that's just the, the first bit of news I wanted to, to say that there is this Warhammer Heroes thing. Like I say, I think the people that give back to the community uh, would rather Games Workshop um, support them with whatever they're doing rather than just give them a t-shirt. That's that's my honest opinion. Rather than putting their name on a, on a roll of honour or whatever that is. Um, you know, I think that uh, continue support um, close relation with... Uh, this worldwide company uh, would be much more beneficial than, like I say, a t-shirt or, or a certificate. That's just my take on it. If I run a, uh, a gaming club, I'd rather uh, get um, more publicity for the gaming club in the local area or even scenery or, or models um, to help that club. You know, or even have a couple of the team from the HQ uh, make a trip to the club um, every every month or every once in a while um, to provide su support for, for people that obviously can't make it to, to the HQ for whatever reason. That would be more enriching and rewarding, I think, um, than, you know, some kind of item. But hey, that's that's just my thoughts on it. Anyway, the other big news, oh my lord, if you also go on the Warhammer community website, revealed new Warhammer this holiday season, wow. So here we go, December, so you don't have to wait very long, well when I say very long, I've seen a couple of the pictures of the, the December White Dwarf and I think that they are up for pre-order, These all these models I'm going to show you, uh, up for pre-order on the, I think the 16th of December. Uh, ready to be released on the 23rd. The 23rd is a Saturday. I would have thought that they'd be closed on Christmas Eve on the on the Sunday. That's when they're all going to be up for, for pre-order and stuff. Uh, I want to say that these uh, lieutenants, I want to say that they'll be £20, but they might try and shift them for £22.50. So the lieutenants, you've got this uh, Blood Angels uh, lieutenant. Um, you've got some specific Blood Angels things like the shoulder pauldron. Um, you've got this Gladius 
kind of sword um, that uh, the sanguinary guard have you've got some bones or a key or whatever and then a skull so th there is that uh, blood angels lieutenant then you've also got a dark angels one who's got a hood and obviously you know a, a plasma pistol and a power sword and uh, again a key and you know a little sword in the box or whatever it is with the dark angels symbol so um you've got those two uh, lieutenants and then in december you've got the uh, uh, release of the Blood Angels Codex and the Dark Angels Codex. Now, I'm a big fan of this. Um, what they should do is every Codex release bring out a new model um, with that Codex. I wish they'd done that with the Tyranids. Uh, obviously, Death Guard, they did do that. Um, Eldar, they didn't, but at least they brought out the, a new excellent start collecting um, box set, I have to say. Um, then, big, big news, the Space Marine Aggressors in an easy-to-build kit. Now, the current kit, I think, is £30. Lovely if this kit is 15 or 20 pounds. If it's 20 pounds, not too bad, uh, in my opinion. They might try and push 25 pound though, uh, which only gives you like a five pound saving. But um, 15 to 20 would be a sweet spot for these guys, but you can only equip them with the, the flamer weapons. Um, then, I don't know why, but they have decided to bring out this Redemptor Dreadnought kit. The legs aren't as bad as. Uh, the Contempt of Dreadnought that they released um, a while ago, I think about a year ago, and uh, it doesn't look too bad. You're not going to tell that much compared to the uh, multi-pose kit. Now, the multi-pose kit's £40, but it's such a good kit, and it was my favourite uh, model in the Primaris release uh, a few months ago. But hey, if you can get a Redemptor Dreadnought for cheaper, and you can build it quicker, get it on the battle top quicker, then that's always a good thing. I am surprised that they went down this route though um, for the Redemptor because the you know the the Redemptor itself is such an excellent kit on its own with all the parts and, and all the rest of it. The customization is one of the the key things on on that kit. Um, but maybe with the number of parts, it was it proved to be too daunting for people. But um, but still, we we've got that price wise. Um, the current one is forty pounds, I believe. So I think if they set this at twenty five or thirty, even I think that's going to be excellent. Imagine getting this Redemptor Dreadnought for twenty five pound. Just imagine that, brilliant. Then, Slime Arbo. Yes, I can't get over how cool this model looks. Wow. He's rocking his G-Shock 40,000. He's rocking his huge jungle knife that uh, looks like it's impaled into an orc head there. And then, if you look very closely, you can see it. Yes, you can't unsee it. The little Shop of Horrors plant. The model is worth getting it just for that plant. Let me tell you. And then he's got some kind of... It looks like... To me, that looks like an Uzi there with a silencer and then a scope on the silencer. I can't unsee that, but I'm assuming it's some kind of auto pistol or auto gun or it'll have some excellent rules. And then he's got his... And he's got his cigar. Yeah, excellent. £15 is going to cost you guys. And uh, yeah, he's going to be coming out on the 23rd too. Then the best news I've heard all day is... The Death Guard Blight Hauler. Finally, Mythic no more. It is on its way. The Mythic Blight Hauler. Big, big fan of this model. Both the rules uh, and its, its loadout. And look at it. It's so cute. It looks like one of those jumping spiders that you see on the, the nature documentaries. Fantastic. I really hope this model is 15 or 20 pounds, um, considering that the uh, bloat drone is uh, 30. Um, 15 pound for this. Imagine, imagine 15 pound for this. I'd, I'd get three of them straight away. That's the uh, blight hauler, and then we've got a very decent picture here of um, a new Lord of Contagion. I'm not a huge fan of all this gloopy stuff. I think a lot of people might cut it off. Again, with the smoke, a lot of people might choose not to put that on or just cut that off. Um, I don't know how uh, compatible uh, these models are going to be with the uh, the actual Blight Lord Terminator box set. I don't think they are because they are easy to build. All of these models that I've, I've shown you are easy to build, um, probably with the exception of the two um, Primaris Lieutenants at the start. So, yes, wow. You've got the, the little Nurgling there with a grenade, another Nurgling, um, some kind of growth thing coming out of the ground there. But this is brilliant because I think this has got the uh, Plague Spewer it's not the plague belch. I think it's a plague spewer. Might be wrong. I, I get those two mixed up all the time. Um, then you've got the uh, the bolters. It's really odd because it's it's dripping with sort of putrid slime and stuff, and that's 
coming out some wires and then he's got this funky kind of bone headdress thing to me personally i i think that the you know actual bone color would have been a better choice uh for this rather than this gray but hey you know um and, and again i'm not really sure about this how bright this goop is um and and then and then of course you've got his manic face look at that such a manic face so a really a huge stark contrast from the um you know shrouded hooded um you know death shroud uh of of the box set before this is a complete co kind of reversal um this guy uh but uh again you know he is a lord of contagion you don't have to have him as a um as a death Road, uh, terminator you can have him as a separate hq choice and then uh, i might as well just explain mortal realms as well uh the stormcast eternals receiving a lord uh celestant um for the first time with a bare head and a shield um so they're receiving that and 40k is receiving a plethora of other models um a little preview of the white dwarf december issue it's going to be a massive issue apparently with 12 free cards uh, a little bit about space hulk if you already have that game you can use eugene steeler cults in there and there's a quite a few battle reports in it too so that is the news kind of from games workshop uh, i just want to talk about uh, some other news finally which is on our news website there's been some some rumors some murmurs of the next primaris tank how they've received that is they they said industry sources have told uh, have told this news website what's coming next that it's named the Overlord. Well, already if you if you even have an inkling of knowledge about um, Primaris Space Marines, you'd only have to read one of the Primaris books, which is Dark Imperium by Guy Haley, and you'll understand that the Overlord just isn't a tank. They they outline it very clearly in uh, Dark Imperium that it is. The super heavy flyer for the Primaris. It makes Thunderhawks look like toys. Think of a, a Stormbird crossed with a Corvus Blackstar. So you've got the tro two troop bays, two separate troop bays underneath the hull of the aircraft. You've got these big wings. It's got uh, powerful quintuple engines. So you're going to have similar kind of engines as the uh, Stormbird. And like I said before, it's got twinned hulls. So it can permit insertion from orbit. Uh, just the same as a Thunderhawk or a Stormbird. It's got anti-munitions cannons and it's got wing-mounted desolator LAS cannons. Now, I think that they're just uh, three-barreled LAS cannons on both of the wings. Uh, it goes into it. It goes into depth of that um, in the uh, novel itself. And also, it's got a nose-mounted melter cannon. Um, so, kind of think of a, of a Mastodon one. And then, obviously, it's got uh, heavy bolters, uh, fixed on the lower wing surfaces so it's going to look similar to a stormbird but a little bit like a black star apparently it's almost done and i'm hoping they're going to show a preview of that uh, this weekend they might not though um but i'm going to grab that designer and speak to him about it it can transport 40 space marines uh, so 20 in each bay basically so not as many as a stormbird don't think it can carry dreadnoughts i think it can just carry uh, aggressors and you know primaris sized uh, space marines but that means that it can carry more than a thunderhawk so my final sort of note about the overlord uh, this this big this super heavy flyer for the primaris is price point now the astraeus tank did surprise me with its price point of 220 pounds uh, i was expecting 300 or a little bit more than 300 so the overlord might well uh, surprise me again um, with the price point that they're going to go for now that now that they're two years uh, past uh, a warlord titan now that they're a year on past the uh, stormbird i think that they'll have to set it at a price higher than the thunderhawk i do i think that it will probably be about i want to say 550 but it could be 600 i i think it might be 600 um pounds and that's based on it being bigger than a thunderhawk because it kind of has to be bigger than a thunderhawk but smaller than a stormbird it might even be the same size as a stormbird but with the pricing of the astraeus i think probably 600 pound um i don't think it's going to be much less it might be more than that but anyway, that's all I really wanted to say about all the news uh, and the updates and everything like that. One final note is 
of course, I'll be at the Warhammer 40,000 Open Day on Saturday uh, this weekend, having a look at Necromunda, all the models from Forge World. Hopefully they'll have their easy-to-build kits there, so we're going to have a look at those. I'll be taking footage, like I always do, meeting up with fellow YouTubers Leaky Cheese and Chapter Master Valrak, hopefully. Just to pre-warn you, I will be taking loads of pictures as well, so your Instagram feed will probably go, be going crazy with the, with the pictures I'll be taking um, and the video and stuff. And if I can, I'll try and do a live unboxing of, uh, of an Astraeus tank. No promises, but I will try. We'll see what happens. Um, I think it's a packed day anyway. All the, all the tickets are sold out. Uh, really looking forward to it. Looking forward to meeting everybody. Anyway, thank you ever so much for joining me this evening. Thank you for watching The Emperor Protects.